Maritime history is full of many unsolved cases. One of these cases is the sinking of Mary Rose. This legendary warship has been an enigma for historians for more than 400 years. Its tale is shrouded in mystery and has a lot of questions. So what happened to this renowned ship back then? Was it the enemy or was it a flaw in her design? Welcome to Nautical Depths, and today we'll examine the puzzling case of Mary Rose. So grab your life vests and let's start today's nautical adventure. Let's take a step back to the year 1544 in England. Henry VIII was the King of Great Britain. After taking the throne in 1509, he embarked on his reign as an intelligent and promising monarch. However, with the passage of time, he transformed into a middle-aged monarch with really bad habits. His financial decisions, such as excessive spending and and unnecessary taxation led the country to the brink of bankruptcy. The question one should ask here is why the king demanded such vast sums of money. The answer lies in his luxurious lifestyle and his relentless pursuit of war. Since the beginning of his reign, Henry had an ambition to reclaim the lost lands in France. He was obsessed with the geopolitical landscape of Western Europe. In the early 16th century, the region was dominated by France and the Holy Roman empire. To reclaim these lands, our boy waged war against France and had some success in it. In 1545, Francis I, the King of France, assembled a formidable fleet. This fleet arrived in the Solent in July and engaged with the English fleet in a brutal battle. The biggest threat to the French fleet was none other than Mary Rose. It was the most advanced warship of that era. Famous for its large cannons, the ship was the favorite one of Henry the Eighth. Its notorious reputation was enough to strike fear into the enemy's hearts. However, despite all this power, Mary Rose sinks in the very same battle. She wasn't hit by the enemy's fleet, but sank while taking a turn in the sea. So how does such a formidable ship sink during a crucial moment? Before we answer this question, let's take a look at this ship and what made it so special during the era. The Mary Rose was a Carrick, a not-so-fast vessel with high forecastles at the bow and stern. These forecastles were crucial for the large number of Marines on board. Back in the day, naval tactics involved boarding as many men as they could to defeat an enemy ship. It had a 2 to 1 ratio of length to beam, and its masts featured 9 to 10 sails. The fore and main masts had square main and top sails. Now, what about Mary Rose's motility. Well, all Karaks were stable in heavy seas and could carry a lot of cargo, but their width and superstructures made them top heavy and a bit tricky to maneuver sharply. Now let's talk about Mary Rose in action. The gun ports, essentially windows, were only about one meter above the waterline. Back then, smaller cannons were used to blast soldiers from the deck of an enemy vessel. However, larger cannons, capable of sinking a ship, were becoming more popular. These bigger cannons couldn't be placed in the forecastles. That's why gun ports were added along the hull. It allowed this legendary ship to carry over 90 large cannons. The Mary Rose underwent a makeover around 1535, changing from a clinker built to a smooth carvel hull. This improved her prowess to great heights, and it became a force to be reckoned with. Despite all this power and prowess, this great ship sank in a way that nobody could have imagined back then. Therefore, a lot of theories were presented to explain this strange sinking of a famous warship. Let's take a quick look at each of these theories. The most popular theory about Mary Rose's sinking is that it was the wind that sank the ship. The only confirmed account we have of that is from the ambassador of the Holy Roman Emperor. In a letter to Charles V, he shared the testimony of a survivor. He mentioned that the Mary Rose heeled over with the wind and water entered through the open gun ports. Archaeologists found that the gun port lids were open when the ship sank. Now, one might wonder if there was a risk of water flooding through the gun ports. Wouldn't sailors know to close them? According to some experts, sometimes in the heat of the moment, things go wrong. There's another interesting point about Mary Rose's main sail. It's been suggested that when the ship sank, the main sail was up and flapping in the wind. Still, the likelihood of a perfectly timed massive gust of wind toppling a warship seems doubtful. So, could there be another reason behind this tragedy? Let's take a look at another famous theory. 
Did the Mary Rose go down because it was loaded with too many guns and men? That's the popular question which is frequently asked in this case. According to historical accounts, the Mary Rose was laden with too many cannons and the ports were left open. That's why when the ship should turn, the water entered and suddenly she sank. Usually, English monarchs used ships to carry soldiers for land battles, but Henry wanted a game changer and he ordered to include all those heavy guns. According to some British historians, this was really important for naval architecture, especially the evolution of lidded gun ports. These lids could be closed when not in use, allowing ships to sit lower in the water and carry bigger guns. However, the idea that the Mary Rose sank because its gun ports were too low has been ruled out. In 2007, it came to light that Henry wanted heavy bronze guns at the front of the Mary Rose. The ship's master and surveyor noted that this would weaken the ship at that point. Interestingly, this is exactly where the ship's stem separated from the rest of the hull. Now let's talk numbers. The captain's brother claimed there were around 700 men on board, which is quite high for combat. Yet the cook's log listed provisions for only 500 men. With such a heavy load, many people claim that it was the reason for the fall of this warship during the battle. Another famous theory about this case is communication issues and a troublesome crew. Sir George Carew was appointed vice admiral just the day before the battle started. He was commanding that ship on the fateful day. Despite a positive relationship with King Henry, some sources suggest that he was not so friendly with the ship's crew. Could tensions on board have played a role in the ship's downfall? This claim of an un unruly crew might be an attempt to protect the Carew family name. What appears certain is that the crew consisted mainly of seasoned mariners. It is possible that the crew may have opposed commands they disagreed with. Another theory suggests that the sailors were suffering from dysentery. It rendered them physically incapable of fulfilling their roles effectively. Moreover, research indicates that some crew members may not have understood the given commands. A recent analysis of a group of crew remains revealed diversity. It has been found that between one and two-thirds of the crew members were non-English. While it's possible that language barriers existed, it's unlikely to be the primary cause of the sinking. It was common in the English fleet at that time to have foreign mercenaries and seamen on board. Still, it's just a theory because no evidence is there to support it. In reality, a combination of factors probably contributed to the ship's demise. The mystery surrounding this prehistoric event persists. It leaves us with more questions than answers. The Mary Rose, once a mighty symbol of naval innovation, now rests beneath the sands of time carrying its secrets. Tell us your opinion on this event in the comment section. Meanwhile, subscribe to the Nautical Depths for more maritime mysteries.